year two, really high density. Like, how dense can I plant these support trees? And I was just learning a lot from um, Felipe and Gennaro in, in Brazil. They, yeah. they run the Agroforestry Academy on YouTube. We we're chatting, and I was like, cool. They're saying you can't even plant eucalypts too dense. Ah. Like, you, you can plant them so dense, and the opportunity to thin them out is the point of it, right? right. The point is to cycle yeah. that material. Like at the start. Like right. at the start. And so, here, I've planted a support tree every 50 centimeters. Wow. We've got alternating eucalypt, tree lucerne, eucalypt, tree lucerne. Boom, boom, boom. Wow. As opposed to every four meters over here. Yeah. Half a meter, four meters. And so the difference was crazy. So this is an area that my mulberry tree snapped, partly because it was not growing in the food forest. It was just kind of planted one of the original ones. This is one of the original fruit trees that I was just like, oh yeah, there's a tree there, and I'll just pop one there. Yeah. And so, boom, the wind oh, gets it. Fine. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is... Not supported by the community. Yeah. So very soon, um, I'm going to basically start a new food forest from that end and connect it all the way up to here. Yeah. And just same exact process, just fill it all in, Yeah. cut that, mulberry will regrow. Yeah. yeah. So what we just walked through was that, that was the first year of learning about syntropic agroforestry. The second year, I made those observations of like, oh, I didn't plant enough support trees, layout stuff could have been a little bit better. So this is my second year's effort. And I just did one, mostly just did one row the second year. So maybe we'll just come on this inside. And basically the, the major adjustment that I made was a little bit more thoughtful spacing of bananas, right? Because they started growing up right next to other seedlings and trees and they weren't spaced super consistently. Yeah. So I tried to be a little bit more consistent with the spacing. But the biggest difference that I made here was the density of support trees. Because you can see in that row back there, there was only one tree lucerne here and one tree lucerne down yeah, there. Yeah. And only like five eucalypts. Yeah. Okay. Right? So I was like, okay, A, it wasn't enough coverage for the first frost. Right. Because that's a big reason I'm growing these evergreen support trees is to protect from the frost in winter. Yeah. So growing them at a low density, it wasn't fulfilling the function. So I was like, all right, cool. Year two, really high density. Like how dense can I plant these support trees? And I was just learning a lot from um, Felipe and Gennaro in, in Brazil. They, yeah. they run the Agroforestry Academy on YouTube. We are chatting and I was like, cool. They're saying you can't even plant eucalypts too dense. Ah. Like you, you can plant them so dense and the opportunity to thin them out is the point of it, right? right. The point is to cycle yeah. that material. Like at the start. And like at the right. start. And so here I've planted a support tree every 50 centimeters. Wow. We've got alternating eucalypt, tree lucerne, eucalypt, tree lucerne. Boom, boom, boom. Wow. As opposed to every four meters over here. Yeah. Half a meter, four meters. And so the difference was crazy. Right there. Yeah. And so in winter, these tree lucerne, and at the moment, they look like little lollipops, right? Yeah, yeah. Like there's not much material on there. Because yeah. all the material is it's feeding the system. Here. It's feeding the yeah. system and covering the soil. But in winter, man, it was a different picture. It looked like it's a giant hedge of tree lucerne. Huh. because they grew out and they were just yeah. taking over and I, I couldn't see anything else. It was just yeah. a bunch of tree lucerne covering it all in winter, yeah. helping the frost yeah. keep off of the young trees. And we're much more frost at risk than you are. So when do you start, like when would you plant, you, the way you do it is you do one um, disruption of a row eh? and yep. you put everything in during that disruption and you don't touch it again. So you wouldn't like start planting your tree lucerne and eucalyptus. I've like had, a year before you start putting your... I've had people do that before and it it makes the, the installation afterwards more tricky. Yeah. Because then you have to work around existing trees and... and yeah. 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 So you're putting everything in at once? Like yeah, all of it. Yeah. Oh, your cherimoya. The cherimoya, the, the long-term stuff, the short-term stuff and everything in between. So there's a lot of cost in, in getting... You say, right, I'm going to do this yep. 10 meter section here yep. and you have to have like 50 yeah plants, the upfront cost is a lot higher than planting a traditional yeah. orchard right? yeah. or a traditional anything the value is that a lot of the stuff is quite easy to propagate right yes. so like once you get your first rows established yes. those are your nurseries yes. right because now i don't need to go buy any more raspberries yeah, yeah. i just harvest them from here and i yeah. put them in the new rows yes. and then in the new rows they grow yeah. they replicate and, and, cool. the next one. and yeah. it's it's that yeah. it, you build this critical mass i don't really need to like do a whole lot anymore. Yeah, like, yeah. It's all just here and like, yeah, you know, unless yeah. I want new varieties or new yeah. trees. Yeah. But you can so see, cool. so some of the biggest differences here. One, the support tree density is crazy. It's through yeah. the roof, right? Yeah. You can see that. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, yeah. boom, all the way down. Two, I've moved the bananas off the tree line. Ah. Right, so you notice the bananas, 
are about half a meter back. Yeah, yeah. So that's allowed me, and you can see under here, you can see the space that that's allowed for me to pack in seedlings ah. all in the understory. Yeah. Right. It's just a full line of tree species. Boom, 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 boom. So what are those ones you've got there? A bunch of cherimoya ice cream ah, beans. Yeah. We've got mulberries in here. There's white sapote. Um, there's some figs. Wow, so you've really gone to town on stuff that's going to grow a bit higher. Yeah. And that's between... And that's coming later though. No, those, those are seeds that are poked in, oh, and they're just right. germinating. So that's between the uh, nitrogen fixes that you've got and, and the, the banana. banana palms here, yeah, so and then in the middle so of that. There's a few different, I'm glad you're picking up on that, there's a few different rows now. It's not all just one, yeah. you know, right. one yeah, everything. Yeah. So on the very front, you can see there's the Mexican gun. Yes. Right? The chop and drop stuff. So that's, that's the furthest north. Yes. Right. Next layer in are the support trees. Yes. Tree lucerne eucalypts yeah. are planted in a line just behind the Mexican sunflower. Yeah. Just behind that like line. 500 mil? I mean, you can see less, probably less than that. I mean, I'd say probably closer to like 20 centimeters right. from a Mexican sunflower yeah. to the sure tree that. line. Yeah. And then behind the tree line is where the seedlings are. And part of that is yeah. because I'm managing with a brush cutter, right? Yeah. Grass with a brush cutter. And yeah. So if I accidentally Oops, Top cut right. cut through a Mexican sunflower, uh, yeah. I'll stuck before I hit yeah, the next yeah. layer of protection, yeah. which is the support yeah. trees. And you're not going to hit your seedlings. That's, because, that's the main thing. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to accidentally A, chop them with a machete, yeah. which is why the Mexican sunflower isn't incorporated in the row. Yeah. I also don't want to accidentally brush cut them. Yes. Right. And the brush cutting is all going back in. Yeah. 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 All organic matter. Yeah. And you could be putting in seeds into that seed row at any time. I am. Hey, boom. Eat a All fruit, the throw it in there. Yep. So yep. Pushing them in. And then are you using those seedlings to move or are they going to stay in that row? If because you're going to do that all it's through all your rows. Stay. I'm not really moving. And seedlings. if your rows were facing north south rather than east west, would you still layer them the same with the uh, Mexican sunflower? Mm -hmm. I'd, oh. still, I'd still do different tiers, but here's the thing. Remember that most recent system that I showed?